It's no secret that the biceps are the beach muscle that every guy wants to build. But proper biceps training isn't as simple as banging out a few sets of curls. Although you may experience some results from focusing on heavy pulling movements and adding a few sets of dumbbell curls at the end of your workout, you will eventually have to take a more strategic approach in order to continue seeing growth. The reason is that as you become more advanced, your biceps may require a different stimulus, particularly due to their more complex anatomy and biomechanics. And in order to train the biceps most optimally, it's critical that you understand what muscles are involved and what functions they're responsible for. So before we jump into the seven must-do biceps exercises, let's quickly go over the basic anatomy. The biceps are a muscle group located in the upper arm, and as the name suggests, is divided into two heads, a short head located on the inside of the arm, closer to the body, and a long head, which sits on the outside of the arm, further away from the body. Both heads originate in the scapula, and both heads converge to insert into the forearm. Often overlooked when talking about arm anatomy is a muscle known as the brachialis. The brachialis is vital when it comes to thickness from the front, and is normally extremely well-developed and visible on most professional bodybuilders. The brachialis sits just lateral to the biceps, between them and the triceps. Now that you know what muscle groups we're looking to target, what exactly do they do? The main function of the biceps is elbow flexion, essentially bringing your lower arm towards your shoulder. As both heads attach to the scapula, there is also an element of shoulder flexion, particularly from the long head of the biceps. The short head also aids in supination, rotation of the forearm and hand, to turn your palm upward. However, when it comes to elbow flexion, believe it or not, this is where the brachialis really comes into play. The brachialis is the strongest of all the elbow flexors. This functional anatomy is vital when it comes to knowing how to train your biceps and brachialis effectively. Now that you understand the anatomy and biomechanics, I'm gonna give you seven biceps exercises you must be doing for bigger arms. Exercise number one, barbell curl. Similar to a barbell bench press versus a dumbbell press, it's gonna be much easier to load the barbell variation than the dumbbell version. For example, imagine trying to progressively overload with dumbbells. Your only option might be to go from 25 pounds to 30 pounds. That's a 20% increase in weight for each arm. With the barbell curl, however, you can simply go from 65 pounds to 70 pounds, a less than 4% increase on each side. For most gyms, it's more likely to have smaller increments in weight with plates than it is for dumbbells. In fact, if you have micro plates, this progression could be even more gradual. This is why I recommend you make the barbell curl the focal point of your biceps training and then move on to higher rep biceps exercises afterwards within a workout. Exercise number two, supinating dumbbell curl. Unlike the barbell, the dumbbell allows a freer range of motion. Besides allowing a more natural, comfortable movement, it also allows more variation with how you curl. My favorite way is to curl the dumbbell and then supinate or twist outwards, almost as if you're trying to touch your pinkies to your shoulders. Studies show that this allows greater muscle activation in the biceps. And if you feel your forearms give out, try curling with both arms at the same time rather than alternating. This would mean less time that an arm is just sitting at your sides while still taxing the grip strength. Exercise number three, incline dumbbell curl. The long head is especially stimulated when the arm is behind the back due to where it originates on the scapula. A great option is the incline dumbbell curl. Besides putting the arm behind the torso, it locks the elbow in place to maximize your form. Since the biceps are maximally stretched at the bottom of the incline dumbbell curl, you're supplying tension to the muscle in the stretched position. This enhances muscle damage on the biceps, which is one of the main mechanisms to stimulate hypertrophy. A common error I often see is people initiating the movement from the shoulder joint. The elbow has to start from a fully extended position while moving only the forearm for the initial part of the movement. It is only after this that the elbow can come forward slightly to fully contract the biceps. Keep in mind, both heads of the biceps will be active here due to the exercise focusing on elbow flexion, but the element of shoulder extension places emphasis on the long head. Exercise number four, Bayesian curl. As we just discussed, the long head of the biceps are more active when the shoulder is extended. The Bayesian curl is essentially a unilateral cable curl, where the shoulder is in the extended position. The best part about using a cable instead of a dumbbell is that the cable provides a more complete resistance curve and places the biceps under constant tension. Unlike the incline dumbbell curl, it's important to start from a fully extended elbow position and to allow your elbows to drift behind your body. Remember, the greater the degree of shoulder extension you are in, the more emphasis you place on the long head. Exercise number five, dumbbell spider curl. The short head of the biceps has two main functions, elbow flexion and supination of the forearm, and it's most active when in a degree of shoulder flexion. 
Not only does the spider curl start with the arm in a degree of shoulder flexion, it also allows for a larger degree of supination to occur at the forearm. Another great thing about this exercise is that it's very difficult to cheat, forcing you to keep the tension on the target muscle. Pro tip, hold the dumbbell right at the edge, with your thumb and index finger touching the bottom of the dumbbell. This will force your hand into a larger degree of pronation, meaning you'll have to actively supinate, which will lead to higher activation in the short head of the biceps. Exercise number six, preacher curl. The preacher curl not only starts you off in a degree of shoulder flexion, but it also allows you to get the biceps into a very short position at the top of the concentric. On top of this, we also know that the biceps are fast twitch dominant, which means they will respond to training under heavier loads. So don't be afraid to load these if you can. There's also a strong body of literature to show that increased load is directly correlated to increased muscle activation in a given area. Luckily, this exercise can be performed with either a barbell or dumbbells. Regardless of which variation you choose to perform, it's important to use a full range of motion. As several studies suggest, it has significant benefits. One study, for example, compared men doing biceps curls with a full range of motion versus curling with a partial range of motion. They found that the full range of motion group gained significantly more muscle and strength than the partial range of motion group. In other words, leave the ego at the door. Lastly, let's talk about the brachialis. When it comes to the brachialis, there's one thing that really helps it grow. Load. The brachialis, being the strongest elbow flexor, is best targeted with heavy loads, using some form of a neutral grip curl. Which brings us to exercise number seven. Exercise number seven, dumbbell hammer curl. The dumbbell hammer curl is a simple and easy to overload exercise. And if you ever reached failure with standard dumbbell curls, you know you can always bang out a few more reps of hammer curls to finish. This is due to the brachialis being stronger than the biceps themselves. For this exercise, avoid shrugging your shoulders to get the weight up. Instead, keep the shoulders back and down and try to move nothing other than the elbows. This will ensure that the brachialis are bearing most of the load while also helping to avoid injury. So there you have it, the seven must do biceps exercises for bigger arms. Although I don't expect you to incorporate all of these into your program at once, I do recommend you cycle them in as needed to achieve maximum biceps development. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're tired of wasting money on useless supplements but are looking for a real edge in the gym, check out our science-based performance stack. With turbocharged and maxed out, you'll cover your pre and post-workout needs with clinically dosed products proven to improve energy, enhance stamina, and increase strength and power in the gym. And right now you can get 25% off your entire order. Just head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description and enter the coupon code MONSTER at checkout. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Peace.